Hello everyone, welcome to the next episode on anubhavtrainings.com. In the last episodes, we have discussed about the difference between SOAP versus OData services. In the last session, we also talked about how can we call a SOAP service or SOAP API using UI5 or Fiori application. If you have not seen the part 1 and part 2 of this series, I would request you to kindly find the link into the description of the video. You can also hit the I button to look at the part 1 and the part 2. In this series of video, we will talk about how can you make a call to a REST API using AJAX in SAP Fiori. So there are two major possibilities or ways to call a OData or REST service in, in UI5 application. The option number one is using OData model, which we have already covered as part of our training. Now, option number two is you can also make use of AGX calls. And that's what the option we will be exploring in this video. If you want to learn SAP UI5 and Fury deeper into the detail with OData model, please subscribe our trainings on anubotrainings.com with OData model and UI5 along with the Fury concepts. So let's look at what is our use case. So we already have a SOAP service, or sorry, REST service available on the internet, which is exposed on the public internet. We would like to explore. So let's write down the steps here. Explore the service. Call the service from a Fiori application. Especially we will be calling load the customer data from the service. So basically that's the advantage of REST protocol. You have different endpoints within a single service which you can make a call to produce different varieties of data. It is also possible to produce JSON and XML data using a REST service unlike SOAP services which only produce an XML data. So we will be producing a JSON data. The benefit of this JSON data will be in the next subsequent step we will be creating a local JSON model in SAP UI5 and binding that with a list control to show the data to the end user. And finally, we will also during this phase, we will talk about how can we go ahead and avoid cross origin resource sharing issues, which usually comes while calling an external service from web IDE. We have also talked about it in the last class. We can avoid that by creating a destination. So subsequently, I will also create a destination to the service. Let's go ahead and explore first our service. So we have a free service available and the service provider here is services.odata.org. They're providing a free service called Northwind service, which has an entity set called customers, which produces the customer data as you can see here. Now my requirement is to not using OData model at all rather calling this REST service, which is kind of an OData implementation with a simple AGX call from a Fiori app. We have already created this Fiori application in the last session. Please check the last session video once again if you've not seen how to create the Fiori app from scratch. I will be enhancing the same application. If you want to download the code, source code of this, please check the description of this video. You will find a link to download the complete source code of this app. I will go back and just go to our view and add some more content to the view. And this time I'm not going to use layout editor rather than I will be using the XML editor for doing so. So I will come back here. Just wanted to call the OData service. I'm just going to add a button with the text property as call OData or REST service. And then say press on rest call and all I'm going to do is after this we will also add here a list control and I will give an ID to this list control as rest data okay so we'll be dynamically binding this list control with the incoming data from the rest call and as you have already seen the incoming data is a customer data Let's go back and implement this function in the controller. Just add a function. 
And here we will be making a REST call. Once again, using the same similar piece of code, like an AJAX call, with two callback functions, success and failure. So let's define this function, success REST. REST stands for Representational State Transfer. I'm going to get the data. And I will say error rest. And there's a major difference between the rest and the SOAP service. The response type will be JSON in this case. All right. So I'm going to use the call. So dollar ajax call. The type of the call is a get request. We're going to prepare also the URL of the call. And as you all know, in the last session, we talked about cross-origin sol solution. We will not be using the absolute path. Rather, we will be using the relative address of the URL. So let's go ahead and add the relative address. So relative address is this one. I'm going to copy this and put it here in this. So we not get any ESLint errors as well. Then we'll put the URL content data type and success callback. Content type is application JSON. Data type is going to be JSON. We'll be putting success callback. My success rest call. And it's also important to pass the current object of this pointer out there. So that my Success callback will receive the controller object as well. Later point of time, that object will be used to access the UI elements. Error callback. And the quite important step is now just to make sure that whenever a V3 call is being made, system has to call our destination. And that's something, a bridge, which we need to establish between the destination and the controller or our project via the new app JSON. So let's add an entry in the new app JSON. I'm just going to create another entry with v3. If v3 is my starting point, please call my Northwind service. So let's create a quickly a Northwind data, data service endpoint in the destinations folder. I'm just going to make a copy of SOAP itself and paste it again with a different name called Northwind. It has to exactly match with the name. And we're going to edit this quickly in a notepad file. Name is Northwind. System also is Northwind. And we will put here the URL of our services.odata.org. Let's bring it up. Save this destination. I will share the destination code also with you. You guys can put it directly in your local web IDE. Let's go back. All looks good. And it's time that we are ready to debug our success and error in case of an error happens or in case of a success happens. So this is how we can make an OData call via AGX. Okay. I'm going to save this. Let's come back here. Refresh the application. And you can see there is a call rest method, uh, sorry, button, which is going to trigger now your rest call. Let's debug the debugger. Click on this. It has made a network call, I guess. Let's go to net network. You can see, yes, there was a call made to the customers. And of hopefully the response would have come. We can just check in the sources where it has hit the debugger. And yeah, voila, you can see we have got the data here. And all the values are available now in the data response in the JSON format. That's the beauty of OData or REST protocol as compared to the SOAP services. So last time when we called a SOAP service, we saw all was in XML format. And now here is straight away the data is in JSON format. I don't have to do any extra processing now to parse this data, extract out the data which I need, 
that's the biggest benefit of a REST service. Okay, and real practical use case of SOAP versus REST. We're going to use this data set and create a JSON model and bind our um, bind our list control with that. So you can see if I just do this dot get view, it doesn't give me anything, which means my this pointer is not yet passed to the current controller instance. So which means I don't have access to this pointer here in this in the success REST API at this point of time, which we need to also give an access now. So let's come back to our web ID project. I'm just going to close this. At least data is coming fine. And this is all coming in data dot value property. So here all the data results is available. My data is equals to data dot value. So here is where your JSON array exists and contains all the data. So what next step we have to do? We need to step one, create a new JSON model and set this data to model object. Step number two, what we need to do once we have received this data, okay, from the, we, once we created the local JSON model and it has got the data, we need to just bind our list control with entity sets where array is present in step number three after we bind the list control with the with the array which is currently present we are just going to make sure that we're gonna set the model to the list level as default model this is purely the binding concept we have learned as part of our ui5 training if you have not taken that please do subscribe our ui5 training to understand the binding concepts in sap ui5 all right let's come back step by step line by line every single line of code no copy paste of code guys that's a true way of learning but there was a challenge i just showed you in the debugging we were not getting the object of current controller in form of this over here and that is probably uh, because of this call so here we have to do something so that we can get the object of this pointer the only way to do that is use dot bind of this this is the way hopefully we should now get the object of this pointer to the success callback function we can just cross check that just wanted to make sure every time before I proceed further with the code I must have an at any point of time I must have an object of controller available in this pointer here in the in the success callback let's come back and refresh so that we can actually obtain the list object from this pointer get view object so let's try made a call yes it hits the success callback function and let me now check the scope for this pointer and yes it contains now the controller object last time it was containing the rest protocol itself but now it's containing the controller object you can see the view object which means now i can do get view and i can obtain the object of my list control and what's the name it's i think rest list i'm not sure what's what was the id we gave just cross check that on the main view and you can see that it's rest data is the name of the list control yes we get that yeah awesome this is our list control object we would need this to do the binding and now let me just close this and move to ahead, move ahead to the move ahead to the programming into my web ide for the desired code so let's come back to the controller and let's do the coding so var o model new sap json model and then o model dot set data and say new data is my entity set name and that's where i'm going to pass my whole my data the data json array we're going to pass that and then we are going to set this model data back to the ui 
So let's get our least control object. That's our least control object. We already checked it. And then I say bind items. Path template list item value and that's all we need to also set the model to the list control that's a very important step as a default model this step comes here awesome let's declare this in scaffolding now out there so you want to be like speedy developer in UI5 you got to practice hard yeah got to practice hard that's how you can become a speedy UI5 developer oh my god awesome this is a phenomenal code I just removed the debugger hopefully our code should work let's also do the binding paths here it's new data and what do we get from customer data let's check it out we get customer ID and company name so I'm going to bind that all right let's go back to the ui and it's time to close the debugger and reload the whole ui right now at this point we will get an empty list there is no data in the list let's make a call to the rest and just rest relax voila there you go you can see all the customer data is now popping up from that rest api to my list control straight away on my fury application awesome guys so that's how you make a soap call you can see also a soap call should work fine both of them are parallelly working fine you can see it's just calculating the total this is a soap call responding as an xml data and it's a rest call which is uh, which is rest service kind of an o data service which is responding um, as a json data which we are mapping to our uh, to our code yeah so please download this source code also this presentation which i've showed you to find out the difference uh, from the link given into the description of this video with that Anubhav signing out please do subscribe this channel and hit the bell icon if you think my videos are helping you do let me know your comments in the comment box below with that Anubhav signing out thank you so much and see you in the next video